G'day everyone, I'm back with another Hilux video. These cars are normally pretty reliable unless I get in the way. <laughs> the first engine I drowned, I got rod knock, I got water in the engine, rod knock on all four pistons. And then I bought this engine that's in the car now and I put it in. It kind of works, but it's got low compression. I need new piston rings, so I'm gonna be taking the head off taking the diff out and the sump off so I can pull the pistons out and I'll be replacing piston rings. All right, the cylinder head is off and everything is fucked. So this marks the beginning of basically rebuilding a 1KZ TE. So with this build series, hopefully I can go from the complete beginning to the end of removing the old engine, refurbishing an engine block, installing a brand new cylinder head uh, and then refitting it into the engine bay. I'll start it up for you and we can see how bad it is. tell you what tools you need and how to keep organized. Uh, I've got this here, it's a Hayes manual. This is a Bible. Uh, you get them specific for your car, so I wouldn't, I wouldn't go taking on a job like this without one. Another thing too, I've just got a piece of cardboard on the windshield, keep a permanent marker handy, and I'm just gonna write down things that I notice uh, that need fixing, and hopefully by the end of it, the car will be tip top. Uh, it doesn't hurt to get some tubs, keep your bolts organized, especially when they are things for camshafts or valves or valve springs or pistons uh, and main bearings and things like that. You need to put things back exactly as they were. I now mean exactly. So you gotta keep things organized. For everything else, magnetic trays, these are amazing. For the obvious bolts uh, or tools or sockets, they're great and they stick to the car if you want them to. I've got glad bags, permanent marker, these are also good, you can put things in bags and instead of keeping them in that magnet tray, you can put them in a bag, put them in a tub, uh, label the bag, and then you can put it back together easily. I've taken the bonnet off just to make working on the engine a lot easier, and I will be putting these bolts back in the bonnet, that's another way to make sure you don't lose anything. Uh, and then yeah, I've got a breaker bar, I've got a torque wrench. When I get into the piston rings, I'll have specialty tools for that. And then yeah, just basic toolkit, should be alright. Big spanners, ratchet spanners help. Impact sockets help and impact wrench helps, but if you really wanted to, you could do it all with spanners, but it would be a nightmare. If you're gonna do things yourself, invest in some good tools, uh, you'll still come out saving money, uh, and you'll have the tools for the rest of your life. So, with that said, uh, we'll get stuck into ripping the engine apart. Now, I've made a video already detailing this water to air intercooler setup, um, the air box and the snorkel. Your car's probably gonna look a bit different, but Either way, just got to remove the battery, the air box, um, you know, I've got a catch can, I'll be pulling that out. Get all this stuff out of the way. Radiator's going to come out, maybe, but if it doesn't have to come out, I won't pull it out. We'll see how we go. Alright, of course the radiator's going to come out because we want to get access to the timing belt. Uh, it's a shitty job with the shroud and the fan and the radiator in the way. <sighs> Alright, so the shroud is two pieces. With this bottom half on, you can't pull the shroud out. Uh, so it unclips. This will just sit in here like that normally. And then the two tabs on the bottom. And then you've got these metal clips that um, clip them both together. All right, next I'm gonna take this belt off, the fan off, the air conditioning compressor off. I'm not gonna undo the gases or anything. I'm just gonna unbolt it, put it to the side. These hoses are flexible. 
just need to undo this nut so we can take the tension off the belt because as it is the bolt will just wind out so you need to loosen this nut as well and then it'll drop down take the tension off the fan can come off feels pretty good then we can get to the timing cover all undone there's a bolt down here and down here you're gonna take this tensioner off that'll take the tension off the pulley take the pulley off and then we can pull the belt out take the pulleys off take the backing plate off and then we're one step closer to getting the cylinder head off Alright, if we attempt to take this gear off right now, it'll just spin in position. So we need to take this rocker cover off, put a shifter on the camshaft, and then that'll stop the camshaft from spinning while we undo this cam gear. things uh, clean or dirt free. I wouldn't say they're clean. Anyway, this backing plate, there's some silicon behind it, which uh, which would explain why it's still stuck on even though we've taken the bolts out. So just grab a pry bar, be gentle. This is thin cast aluminium. I've, um, I've broken one of these before. All right, now I'm gonna focus on the inlet manifold. First of all, you've got to move these fuel lines. They can be very delicate and the injectors are very sensitive as are all injectors on diesel motors. So I will be getting them rebuilt, but you don't want to be damaging up uh, these lines and banjo bolts and things like that. So uh, be careful of that uh, and keep the lines clean as well. So keep, keep whatever you've got to keep handy. Just make sure you keep them clean. Uh, and I'll get some of this wiring out of the way as well. The glow plugs out, the injectors out, and the intake manifold off. To get to this bolt here, I had to take the oil filter off, uh, and I left all of those fuel lines bolted to the inlet manifold because they kind of wrap around. Easy just to leave them all together. All right, I'm trying to take the manifold off, but I cannot get to the bolt back in here. Uh, I just I just can't get a tool onto it correctly, so I'm gonna ruin it if I try. I figured out the secret. Now this pipe was in the way, uh, and there is a bolt that holds this pipe on here. It's really hard to get to, but anyway, if you can get to it. It sits about here, right? And so you're trying to get a socket onto this stud, but the pipe is in the way of your socket. 
So if you can get this pipe down here, or off or out, or, or whatever you got to do, uh, it frees up some room. Not to get a socket on here, but instead to get a ring spanner on. And then because this pipe is out of the way, or lowered, you've actually got room to swing the spanner underneath. Uh, and you can crack it loose with a spanner, with a ring spanner. Once you crack it loose, you can kind of get a socket on it on the piss with an extension. Uh, and as long as it's hand tight or hand loose, uh, I wouldn't worry about the socket being not entirely on the nut. Anyway, it saved me a lot of hassle undoing that turbo because I was underneath that looking at it. Uh, and I really didn't want to have to work around all that nonsense underneath to undo it. So lucky us we don't have to do that. All right, just so you know, with that manifold as well, you need to take the studs out of the head, otherwise otherwise you can't lift it up because of the studs and you can't pull it uh, out because of the studs in the downpipe. So just keep that in mind, you, you gotta pull the studs out one way or the other, otherwise, otherwise you just got no room to work it out. Now, with that really difficult nut, I was saying I had a ring spanner on it, I also had another spanner on that ring spanner and that gives you a lot more leverage because you're basically doubling the length of your spanner, your lever, uh, and it also brings it away from the the head as well, so you can crack it loose just like that, and then you should be you should be okay to pull it out like I did. All right, I've just taken the rocket cover off and exposed the cam. Now we can see the head studs in here. They kind of zigzag along all the way up there. They're covered in oil, and then outside of that, same thing, zigzagging head studs. Uh, they've got you're gonna have to use a double hex socket on these. They're not your typical bolt. Now when undoing these, there is a sequence and you've got to do it gradually. You can't just undo one bolt all the way and pull it out. You've got to loosen them all in a specific order, loosen them all a bit further in a specific order, uh, and keep doing that gradually until they all come out or they're all hand, hand tight, hand loose. If you don't follow that procedure, you have a good chance of warping the head and doing damage. Alright, this is our Hangs repair manual. Flick it open to the relevant engine. We have a section here called Cylinder Head Removal, C Illustration 11.31, and we come down here, it's got each head stud labelled, loosen the bolts in the reverse order, so if you would tighten number one first, the reverse order would be to undo that last. Looks like there's 18 head studs, we would loosen 18, loosen 17, loosen 16, loosen 15, all the way till we get to one, do it again, and again, and again, and eventually they'll come out. Alright, we're ready to pull this off now. Uh, make sure you set up an area for yourself so you've got somewhere to put it. You can just pry it loose and now we can muscle it out of here. Now we'll have a good look at this and we'll have a good look at the head as well. Make sure it's not cracked because it's uh, these heads are prone to cracking. All right, here's our cylinder head. The camshaft can stay in. Just want to check that for any cracks, anything uh, concerning. All right, so these are our valves here. Uh, I've noticed that there are some just gouge marks in here and this valve here has got a bit of a deformation on it. Uh, there's all this flaky I don't know what that is, whether it's a part of the head gasket or, I don't know, this is the first time I've ever really done something like this. Anyway, I hope that's normal. Yeah, that is concerning, that damage there. And I have noticed this intake port for cylinder number two uh, is more sooty than the rest. Uh, so that could be an indication of something as well. But this is not my area of expertise. Stick around for part two. Uh, I'll continue disconnecting everything else and then get the engine out of the way, which should be fun because I got a, a steep driveway right behind the camera. So pulling the engine crane backwards and out with the engine is gonna be a nightmare. In hindsight, if I realized I was gonna be putting a new engine in, I would have taken this to the factory and done it there where it's 
there's a lot more room to work uh, and it's all flat but I'm stranded here now so we just got to uh, just got to get it done the head is damaged the balls are no good so I can't really salvage them I got a brand new cylinder head already behind me ready to go uh, I just picked up another engine block which needs a lot of cleaning up it hasn't had a head on it and it hasn't had a sump on it for a while so I'm gonna go through that new bearings everywhere and all the rest that goes with it so bear with me I've never really done anything like this before but Hopefully I can show you definitely the disassembly and fingers crossed I can tackle this job on my own. You don't need to pull the head off to pull the block out. It's just that I thought I'd get away with just pulling the head off, but everything's cactus. So uh, yeah, this engine's coming out and I'm gonna rebuild another one and then put the rebuilt one in this place. 